You look good because you are on your side, and yeah. and she's <laughs> 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 sacrificing. So she sacrificed her side. For I'm me. sacrificing oh, my that. Yeah, says a lot about somebody, honestly. What? <laughs> to, sac sacrifice, yeah. to sacrifice. To sacrifice my side. Yourself. Yeah, because I know how <laughs> it's important. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Libra gang. Libra gang. Where are you, Libra too? Aquarius, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> but my rising is Libra. Oh, your rising is Libra. Yeah. Your name is Austin, right? Uh, yeah, Austin, Las in Vegas. Las in Vegas. Mm -hmm. How did Las in Vegas was created? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, I've never. Yeah. Okay. One thing that I'm curious: you're from Vegas. Yeah, born and raised. That has a lot to do with my name, obviously. Like the actual moment I decided to call myself Las in Vegas was actually a really cool moment because I didn't initially want to call myself anything else than Austin. Fast forward to when I moved to Cali, met Mod, been on a couple tours with him, and I was Austin Kane Music. And right. that's how I promoted myself, that's how I saw myself, and that was pretty much like my brand, right? Right. We were getting ready for, I forget which tour it was, it might, might have been the movie tour, right. and it was me, Forget Brennan, who's Mod's guitarist, and we were chilling in his, in Mod's room. For some reason, Mod just like brought up like, dude, I think you need to like rebrand. And I was like, dude, Dude, I spent like years, <laughs> years as Austin K Music. Like people right. know me as Austin K Music, even though I didn't really have a lot of a people who knew me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man. Like I was super hesitant. He's like, okay, well, if we don't come up with a dope name tonight, then you could keep your name. But if we do, you got to change your name. He like threw out the idea. Let's like incorporate like where you're from. I also like kind of threw out the idea. Like I love the weekend party next door and just kind of mm -hmm. like the imagery behind it. Okay. When you hear that, you're just automatically intrigued. Mm -hmm. It just automatically takes you to a place like party next door or whatever. For some reason, I don't know why, but when I used to work at the warehouse, there was this kid in the warehouse who would call me lost in. Mm -hmm. Lost in. Because like, I don't know if there's a Libra thing, but I'm <laughs> always in my head uh no it is definitely a i am always in my head and like people think libras are an airhead i don't know if it just specifically, it is i always look like i'm daydreaming for s some reason it just got brought up i don't know if it was brennan or mod or who it was we just combined them it was like lost in vegas for me i'm all about symmetry so i was like it just gotta mm. look it has to look dope too so i was pretty hype about the name but i wasn't sold on it until mm. after tour and then i started like it just started rolling off the tongue and it just kind of i felt into the name organically and naturally I, I needed to evolve into lost in vegas right because for one i get to give people that imagery and that vibe of where i came from mm -hmm. and two it just like encaps encapsulates yeah. like my whole aura i want to do something with you that i tell you my favorite songs of you okay and you tell me either the story behind it or the meaning or whatever you feel oh, like cool. you have to share about this i had to listen to your whole discography right Sick. the first song ever that you have it's hollywood signs at least on spotify that's oh, your first yeah. song i feel like it's pretty vulnerable but also one thing that got my attention is that it's with Matson. what happened so i love that you brought that song up because i wrote that song after i got back from the alpha mega tour i'm sorry what's the alpha mega tour? so the alpha mega tour was with machine gun kelly and mod son when mod son opened up for kels i was pretty much there just as like a, a helper like right. I was just assisting, doing whatever I needed to do to like help keep the will squeaky. It was a super inspiring experience because I got to see Kells pretty much like performing. I got to see Mod performing every single night. I got to see them in their element. I got to see them before the show, after the show, during the show, how they acted. I went back to Vegas. I think it was like during Thanksgiving. I was still working at the warehouse. The warehouse was here in LA. Mm -hmm. The right. warehouse was here in LA. So it was right when you move, moved from Vegas. I guess. Mm -hmm. When I moved from Vegas to LA, the reason why I moved was because I got this internship with this guy named J.O. who is kind of mods like business partner mm. in a sense he like handled this warehouse that had merch in it long story short i'm working in this warehouse right something happened with my living situation where i really didn't have anywhere to go and then mod was like yo just live with me he had a studio in his house i was like always like in the studio like working like whenever he was gone i sent him how 
Hollywood signs and I was like, yo, bro, like, what do you think of this? He sent me a text back and he was like, yo, dude, this is actually really fire. He was like, can I sing the hook? We went in the studio, he cut the chorus. That song evolved into what you hear now. That song actually is the reason why he wanted to start a label. Like his whole his whole dream was to have artists underneath him to mm, like help grow okay. and stuff like that. He saw that in me, I guess. So, so he was the one that introduced you to music? I would consider him more of like a, a mentor. He didn't introduce me to music because I was still doing music before mm, I was got it. living in LA. And then I met him. He pretty much just kind of showed me the other side of music. Grimy, dark side to the amazing, beautiful side. A lot of what he taught me I use like every day. He definitely was like a pretty pivotal character and evolving lost in vegas the reason why like i'm where i'm at and like how i move and stuff like that so definitely friend mentor like all of that so i saw this in an interview that you dropped out of college mm, what yeah. you were that's just like a personal curiosity <laughs> oh yeah yeah i actually double majored in college so you did um, a lot of people don't know this i lived in st louis for two and a half years the reason why i moved to st louis is because i got a division one scholarship to play at the school called southern illinois university I had no idea what the fuck I was getting myself into. <laughs> I had no idea how cold it was out there. I went there. I originally majored in bi marine biology because I love no. the ocean, which is ironic because I'm actually scared of the ocean. No, me too. <laughs> like, so I don't know what I was thinking, but on. I was so fascinated no, by on. dolphins. Like my bathroom was just filled with dolphins. <laughs> That's oh, I, got so <laughs> I, was I was not like, expecting I don't know what this. my logic was No, that, my, like, no in my know. head, it was, it was like, you were either studying music or business, one or the other, but uh, uh, I would never no. tell you you were no, I, was, I started marine biology, bro. I took, like, <laughs> damn near five biology classes, and I was like... No. But with that being said, I switched over to psychology oh, okay. and double majored in psychology and art. Oh, okay. Now yeah. it makes more sense. And then I dropped out. For whatever reason, I think it has a good vibe, but I like the song, honestly. There's a line, I don't know if it's right, but it's like, she ain't good for me, but I ain't good for her either. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know, I liked that. Me. I ain't good for her either. Oh, man, I haven't... That's a good song. It's an, yeah. That project that these songs were on was the first project that I was technically, I released underneath like Mod. I had this song written, right? Mm -hmm. And I had this hook and then I showed Mod because I think he was dating Bella Thorne at the time. So he was always like in and out. So I was like in the oh, studio. Okay, I was so in the studio in his house and I was just like, I'm just going to work. I literally locked myself in the studio. I actually slept in the studio and I had a mattress in the studio. So you lived so, in the studio for a while? I lived in the studio at Mont's house Damn, on it a just mattress gets more interesting. on the floor <laughs> just chain smoking cigarettes like dude I'm, I got this I love you know how, what I'm saying I love like, how you're saying that and we're both looking at Daniel who is <laughs> just, his reaction is, is being so good right, right now, now <laughs> dying laughing but i saw that song the verses were there i had a completely different hook i don't even remember it not taught me a lot about writing actually mm -hmm. he got on and he was like i don't know if this hook is strong enough and i was like ah <laughs> really and you're giving like, your best it, dude. but that was my favorite track performing on tour because it really? just has that like yeah, it has you a good vibe. Saying? You have an EP called Soccer. I kind of yeah. know why, because you used to play soccer, mm -hmm. but I went in no more. That was my whole life, like, honestly. Did I don't know play? the time when uh, I was, I don't still play. From when I started walking to when I dropped out of college, I was playing soccer. I fell out of love with soccer, and I fell in love with music. Mm. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I just felt like I needed to go that direction. Everybody thought I was crazy. So Maud was like, you should call it soccer. Mm -hmm. That way you could kind of like close that chapter of your uh, life. That I had no idea. Time in my life was a very, it was a, there's a lot of dis, like discovering mm -hmm. of who I was. There was a lot of molding and shaping. Like I felt like I was Play-Doh. And then once I released it, I actually felt kind of like this weight being lifted uh, right. like off my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was still carrying that that was what everybody was expecting me to do. Like, yeah. I was supposed to be playing professional soccer, and here I am, sleeping on the floor, chain-smoking cigarettes. If you would have asked me this in college, I was like, 
be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Naming that project soccer, given the fact that I spent my whole life playing soccer, was kind of like a spiritual thing, honestly. I saw something you said that you never really felt like you were fitting in. So mm -hmm. now you're, yeah. instead of being worried about that, you're using that in your advantage, like yeah. in your favor. Yeah, me and Dan talk about that all the time. Oh, really? Because, you know, going back to just my childhood, I never, I always felt like this emptiness, which is the reason why I was so good at soccer, because like that was where I felt more my most comfortable. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about what people thought about me. I had everything in my full control. I feel that same way in music too, where I, that whole soccer EP too was just like me experimenting with different styles, which right. is the reason why I was just like, well, dude, I don't know, because like I listen to literally everything. <laughs> I, yeah, <understand laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just as of recently, I just kind of like came to terms with what if I don't have a style? Yeah, and the people who yeah. relate to you somehow, yeah. they're gonna. And honestly, once I had that revelation, I started making really good music. It's it's a weird dichotomy. Yeah, because I feel like if you stuck too much in the mindset that oh, this is the kind of music that I do, because I think mm -hmm. it works the same for YouTube. You know, this is the kind of video that I have to make mm -hmm. then you're not allowing you to be creative and do all their stuff because you mm -hmm. you know you have all that pressure and i felt that pressure too which i felt like was almost like a creative block that i wasn't completely aware of intuitively i knew that i something wasn't clicking it was this year actually like the beginning of this year mod was working with john feldy and mod wanted to put me and jimmy bennett in mm -hmm. a group together Right. Called the uh, the sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> Almost forgot about it. And also, it it was pretty dope. Like it would have been really fucking sick. It was cool. And the music we were making was alternative rock, like pop punk vibe. The songs are sick. <laughs> but I just like you didn't. You know what I mean? Like I like even you were not feeling. It really sucked. Like it put me in a position because here I'm working with this really well-known producer who people would literally probably kill somebody <laughs> to work with. work with mods in the studio like avril's in the studio so many talented people i'm super excited i'm glad like i went through that experience because it pushed me to find my voice but at the same time when i laid my head at night i was just like you're not i couldn't visualize mm. myself like being this artist like i, I have to that. find my own artist which is one of the reasons why i kind of uh separated myself from that situation right um i forget what the original conversation or question was uh, no no it's perfect <laughs> like it's I'm perfect like that's of, that's exactly I've what been i wanted on a tangent but no that's yeah, that's well, perfect that exactly the question. i did don't worry <laughs> probably my favorite dna oh my gosh i forget about that song no Am I you forget <laughs> yeah it's probably my favorite and it's interesting that i think is the one at least in my point of view is the one that is the most different from your songs your yeah. discographies it's completely yeah. different it has this lower piece pace mm -hmm. <laughs> it has this lower pace <laughs> yeah i love that song actually that's uh, see, that was during that time, too. Like I said earlier, I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to f see what my style fit. That mm -hmm. When I wrote that song, that was originally on just, like, a guitar. And I was like, I'm just going to go into kind of more of, like, an alternative side and just... Right. See if that sticks at all. But that song is a vibe. Like, I it's a vibe. It's my it's favorite. A, I wrote a, a hip hop -y, like, type of verse but mm -hmm. then i took the metaphors that hip-hop artists would use but i just put it into more of jack johnson mm -hmm. singing like vibe into it yeah, so i, I just kind vibe. of was just it's like tetris and we have got lost that mm -hmm. it's your most popular song mm -hmm. so what happened the first time i heard the beat to that song mm -hmm. it was during quarantine mm -hmm. and i'm going through my stories and i'm laying in bed and it's actually ironic that we're here right now because John produced it, which is the studio that we're in right now. Oh, okay. Um, John Fox, shout <laughs> out one time. I literally heard three seconds of the song and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, like this is insane. And then at the time, I was going through like some drama with my friend and also... What year was that, 2020? This was during quarantine, yeah, yeah. so 2020. So being like an empath that I am, I just wanted to write something I don't know, like I wanted to help them, but I knew I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was dealing with like a lot of emotions with my other friend, like why would he do that? He kind of 
did me dirty in a way but I knew it came from a lot of pain and a lot of hurt Mm -hmm. and it wasn't the same person that I like I knew damn that was fucked up like we were brothers like type of shit I hated him at the time Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I I I felt wrong hating him because I knew he was like in a, a bad place you could be there to help facilitate people getting better but sometimes you can't actually be like make them better overall i feel like your songs have this energy not this energy but on the lyrics you express a lot how much pressure you feel about a bunch mm-hmm. of different stuff do you still feel that way or is it a liberate thing i don't know like if it's just me being like hyper emotional or no. i feel like i take on a lot of pain and compared to what other people have to go through i've kind of just been floating through life whims like whimsical i don't even know how to say that word whimsically <laughs> that's how i feel <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean just like a dandelion you know what i whimsically whimsically for some reason i just got like this i always just carry this like heaviness every time i just like see what other people are going through mm-hmm. i put myself in their position in their shoes and i'm just like wow oh no you know what i mean like that was just like me swifting through the my emotions you know how your brain works like it's just like what you your thoughts are just they come and go and like at that time that's what i was thinking you're too hard on yourself and yeah we're we're almost done no you're good take your time you guys you are by the way you're killing it yeah this is fun this I'm is learning, recording. I feel like this is a I'm therapy session. So <laughs> I'm, learning, I'm learning so much from him, and I know him. Do you want to come and say hi? You can this introduce Dan. Him. Hey. <laughs> he said I'm killing it. <laughs> no, no, last things that I think is important for us to say. Your most recent post on Instagram said that you are opening your own label now. Is that it? Yeah, so... Damn, good question. I've been independent for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, you know, I was with Mod. Yeah. And verbally kind of like his artist, like he was kind of, I felt like he was curating me to be Mm. who I am now. I started seeing a lot of sides of the music industry and Mm. I have a lot of friends in the music industry that are on both sides of the spectrum, independent and also signed. And I see a lot of artists who are signed, like wanting to get out of their deal. And a lot of artists who are independent who are struggling just to even pay their rent. So Mm -hmm. I started studying a lot about the business side of things like on music. Mm -hmm. And I started researching and I started figuring out I could actually do this and create this world I don't have to rely on anybody and I feel like we're at a time in music right now where we don't have to sign Mm -hmm. like we could be completely independent and be very successful obviously I'm still learning this whole side of things but my whole life I never was good with people giving me direction (laughs) you know what I mean and never I was like I'm just gonna figure out this business shit and I'm just gonna do it did you start already or well it's been a process it's honestly been like a whole year's process but Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm finally at a point where I understand yeah because you have a lot of experience how to do it like how to leverage things pretty much taking the same concept as a label but just curating it into my own way there's still a long way to go yeah, but you just started. Um, the industry is leaning more towards independent artists and allowing artists to be artists and mm-hmm. be creative and not keeping them in a closet. You're playing your first headline show two weeks? Ye- two weeks? Is this month? 19th. 19th, yeah. Mm-hmm. How December, you feeling? December 19th. Um, yeah. I feel this is my first headline show, so I feel ready normally i would probably be nervous i'm probably going to be nervous because it's my first Mm -hmm. you know but i'm more just really excited because i feel like i'm i've been putting in enough work i used to suck at performing (laughs) (laughs) i used to suck the first tour that i went on with mod i had two songs okay but it was your first it was my first we had to cut the second song because yeah, mom was really? like, yo, bro, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, dude. I don't know what to do. Like, I have no idea. Like, what, what do I do with my hands? Like, what do I look at? Aww. Like, how do I act? Do you have videos of that? I probably somewhere. I hope so. <laughs> I know Rod probably does. I never was a natural performer at all. No, really? And I feel like this last tour was my, my fuck 
everything. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let go of just what, what, and that's the thing. When you perform, you're always thinking about the one thing that holds you back is what you think people think of you. And this last tour, and that's when me and Dan met working in the gym, like, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) I was just like, yo, fuck it, dude. I'm just going to give everything I have and like not give a fuck. So I'm super excited to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. If they give you the opportunities because they trust you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. So December 19th. Do you want to say something to your fans or people who just met you now? If you just met me, <laughs> go listen to my music. Go get you some Vegas in your life. Thank you so much. I know this journey has been a crazy journey, but we're just getting started. And um, I'm excited for all of us. And the lost ones are going to take over. Um, and who knows? I might be on national television next year. So Yeah, I'm excited I'm just going to you know, call it right now. So rewind. Woo! Go look at this video when I'm on television and then be like, damn, dude, like, yeah. you really predicted that. Imagine when you blow up and then they're going to see this video. It's like, how cute. Yeah, I called it.